Thank you, Swears. Um, most of you wouldn't know me. Uh, my name's Anthony Gray. I'm the Managing Director of Octagonal Resources. Uh, Octagonal is a junior Australian gold-focused exploration and mining company. It was incorporated last year to acquire what we consider to be high-quality exploration assets located in underexplored areas of uh, Australia's two most significant gold-producing terrains, being the Bendigo Zone of the Lachlan Fold Belt here in central Victoria and the Eastern Goldfields Province of the Yulgarn Craton in Western Australia. Uh, octagonal resources listed on the 5th of January this year, second day of trading. We raised $12 million via the issue of 48 million shares at 25 cents per share. Coming out on the ASX on the second day of trading when everyone's on holidays isn't a good idea. Uh, we've been trading at a discount ever since. Uh, our market capitalisation at the moment is about $14 million. We've got, at, as of the middle of the year, $8.7 million in the bank. Uh, and uh, our major shareholders are predominantly our vendors, Alliance Resources Limited, Abbotsley Proprietary Limited, who's owned by Ian Gandal, our chairman, uh, Newmont Asia Pacific, and uh, Matrix Gold shareholders. We also have uh, JP Morgan nominees up there for almost 10% of the company. That's predominantly a group of German shareholders. Our company structure, you'll, you'll notice a few of our, our companies in central Victoria. Uh, basically, we established the company to acquire Molden Resources from Alliance, who had the 150,000 tonne per annum porcupine flat gold processing facility at Molden and the 182,000 ounce Alliance South deposit. Um, we acquired High Lake Resources, uh, which has uh, 53,000 ounces of near surface open pitable mineralisation at Pearl Croydon near Maryborough and then Matrix Gold, who tried to list on the ASX a couple of years ago, they've got a number of uh, near-surface uh, target areas as well. It's bloody hard to raise money based on a Victorian-only gold company. So we had to look broader afield to uh, bring another project to the company. I live in Kalgoorlie, I've worked in the Eastern Goldfields for many years, more recently I've also worked over here in Victoria. Uh, a couple of years ago at Diggers and Dealers, we became aware of a project Newmont was looking to divest called the St Alvano Project. It's located near St Ives Gold, 70 kilometres southeast of Kalgoorlie, directly south of Integra Mining Salt Creek Discovery and Silver Lake Resources Daisy Milano Mine. It's under transported cover. I knew the area well. Uh, essentially, we paid $2 million in script for that and it allowed us to raise what we believe is $6 million more than we would have on a Victoria-only company. So company highlights, uh, we've got an advanced portfolio of Victorian gold assets and we've got a high quality exploration project in Western Australia. We'll be looking at getting up to 30,000 ounces of gold production per annum based at Molden, a combination of open pit and underground resources. As I said, we've got the Alliance South deposit, 182,000 ounces of gold. Uh, a decline has been developed to within 100 metres of that deposit. We've got open pit resources at Pearl Croydon, which we'll be looking at drilling up. Uh, we also have other advanced targets at Wheeler and Denali as well. We're looking at building an ongoing, sustainable, profitable gold mining operation in Victoria. Where we intend to grow the company is in Western Australia. So essentially the money coming out of Victoria will be uh, put back into Victoria exploration to sustain the operation. Our blue sky for our investors is Western Australia. So our short-term objectives, cash is king. We need to generate a cash flow as quickly as possible. We raised $12 million, we're down to eight and a half. We need to get into production as quickly as possible. We don't want to have to go back to the market unless we have some serious exploration success. Um, initially, we're looking at Wheeler, Black Reef at Wheeler, small open pit, trial open pit. I'll discuss that in a bit more detail shortly. And then obviously underground at Alliance South. We obviously need to complete resource definition drilling here in, in Victoria to sustain the operation and we have, intend to undertake aggressive ec regional exploration, particularly in Western Australia, which is where we're looking at growing the company. Our budget for the next two years, we're looking at $5 million in mine development, both open pit and underground here in Victoria, 1.6 on resource definition drilling and 2.6 on exploration, with 2 million of that uh, attributed to Western Australia. 
Uh, please note, obviously, the budget doesn't include income, and we expect to be producing gold <coughs> later this year out of Melbourne. So our Victorian uh, gold operations, obviously in central Victoria, between Bendigo and Ballarat. We've got the uh, broadly seven, seven projects. Uh, Molden, the Molden, which covers most of the Molden goldfield. Campbelltown, covering most of the Campbelltown goldfield. Pearl Croydon out here near, just south uh, west of Maryborough. Denali East, McIntyre, Wheeler and Riola. We consider our key assets to be the Molden Gold Processing Plant and the Union Hill Decline. Between these two assets, they essentially incorporate about $30 million worth of sunk capital. Uh, the uh, Molden Gold Processing Plant, it's a small carbon and leach gold processing plant, 150,000 tonne per annum mill. Uh, we're fixing up, the, we're basically recommissioning it at the moment, fixing up a few tanks. We'll be ready for production in uh, probably about four, four to six weeks. Uh, low processing costs, no water and power issues. Uh, Union Hill decline, 1.9 kilometre long decline. Uh, capital cost, $18 million. Uh, it's developed to within 100 metres of the ore body. Uh, completely dewatered. We think it will cost us less than $2 million to get onto ore. When we listed, uh, we basically set out a strategy to get into gold production in Victoria. A three-step strategy focusing on developing a low risk high-grade, high-margin gold operation. The first step was open pit mining of the Black Reef at Wheeler. The Wheeler Goldfield is located 60 kilometres from Molden. Uh, it's historically produced over 100,000 ounces of reef-hosted gold mineralisation. Uh, it's nuggety, high-grade gold mineralisation. Uh, being Central Victorian, nugget effect is always an issue. How do, how do you deal with it? Uh, 70 shallow drill holes have been drilled through this area with some very high grade results including 5 at 35, 5 at 15, 4 at 25. There's a lot of low grade stuff sitting in there as well. How do we reconcile this? How do we understand the structural controls on the mineralisation to justify a larger, a larger operation? Well the approach that we've decided to take is focus on an area where we know there's gold mineralisation and essentially dig a trial, a trial open pit. Uh, the area that we're interested in uh, had a costing that returned 14 metres at 4.5 grams gold and as I've said, drill holes returned 5 metres at 35 and 5 metres at 15. We're looking at putting in a pit to around 20 metres, uh, sorry, 30 metres vertical depth, take out a 20 to 25,000 tonne essentially bulk sample, try and work out what's going on with the uh, structural controls on the gold distribution, is there a nugget effect there? Essentially the aim of this is to allow us to justify a larger open pit mining operation in the Wheeler area. Earlier this year we drilled 35 RC holes for 1400 metres uh, on a 10 by 10 pattern in the area of the high grade drill intersections. The purple stars here indicate the two high grade drill intersections. Uh, the results that we returned, we've, we've got some reasonable numbers there, 5 at 2.5, 7 at 2.2, 2 at 4.5, you can see them all there, 1 at 15. Uh, these, these results are within larger envelopes at averaging out 1.7 to 2 grams. Uh, we didn't get the 5 metres at 35, we didn't get the 5 metres at 15. Are we dealing with nugget effect? Are we dealing with problems with historic uh, drill methods, sampling, analysis? What's going on here? The way we see things, 2 grams, maybe a bit below, is, is essentially our break even grade to put this stuff through the mill. If we get nugget effect out of this, that's our profit. So we're going to go in there later this year, as soon as we get regulatory approval, mine that open pit, work out what's going on, work out whether we have the potential to develop a much larger open pit mining operation at Wheeler. The second step to cease into production is underground mining of the Alliance South Chute at Molden. Essentially underground mining is obviously a very high risk, high cost um, process. We felt that by getting into open pit production first, that would essentially de-risk the underground operation by giving us a cash flow ahead of the higher high risk underground. As I said, we've got an inferred resource of 182,000 ounces of gold at Alliance South. This is a long section of the Alliance South deposit. Uh, access from the Union Hill decline in the Union Hill open pit. The decline initially runs to the north, then wraps around to the south where it runs past the historic 70,000 ounce Union ore chute, past the historic 39,000 ounce Alliance ore chute, 
down to essentially the top of the Alliance South deposit. The yellow dots on this diagram here indicate vis uh, holes with visible gold mineralisation in them and essentially this is the area that we're going to be targeting first up. Uh, realistically we can see 40 to 50,000 ounces of high grade gold mineralisation in there. Um, I'll zoom into, uh, into this area of the long section and just recently we've uh, completed a 17 hole underground diamond drilling program. I, I mentioned the visible gold intersections, they're purple, star, um, they're purple stars on this diagram, that's the Alliance South shoot there. Uh, we've just completed all these black holes up in through here to test for other near development uh, mining opportunities. The one of most interest to us is uh, what we term the lower flexure in here, which had some pretty significant gold intersections in, in, in historic drilling, 1.5 metres at 13.9, 4.5 metres, 12.8, 0.6 at 45. Uh, this looks like a real development opportunity for us. Unfortunately, the drilling positions available to us from the decline didn't get a good angle at that. Um, we did get the opportunity to test the upper flexure up here, and there's a hole here, hole 106, intersected three metres at 18 and a half grams. It's, it's, 17, it's only seven metres directly above this sill drive. Uh, in the next month or so, we're going to uh, uh, drive, develop a raise up there. Uh, we think it's in spurry, spurry veins off the main reef. We're not sure if there's going to be much gold associated with that, but for 40 grand, we can go up there, find out what's there, and if it's gold, we'll certainly mine it. Um, so we're going back to this section. Now the um, Alliance South shoot is hosted in the Eagle Hawk Reef. As, as you would have seen, it covers uh, a two kilometre line of reef. At this southern end of the reef here, there are three other historic primary gold producers that each have produced over 100,000 ounces of gold from the Molden Goldfield. These reefs are all sub-parallel and lie within a 400 metre wide envelope. So by, by essentially developing down to the Alliance South chute, it puts us in a position where we can start drilling horizontal holes to test these three other, uh, three other reefs. Uh, so looking at the, the Molden Goldfield, it's broadly termed the Central Molden Shear Zone. Historic production, 1853 to 1920. There's been no serious underground mining here since 1926. 1 1.47 million ounces of gold. Uh, Nuggety Reef up the top over 300,000 ounces of gold. Eagle Hawk Reef, which hosts the Alliance South shoot down here, 491,000 ounces of gold. And then you've got the Beehive, German and Derby Reefs, all within this 400 metre wide envelope. This is where we see our medium term growth opportunity underground at Molden. I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail shortly. Our third step to seeing us back into production is uh, resource definition drilling and open pit mining of the Pearl Croydon deposit near Maryborough. Uh, essentially we see ourselves having around 25,000 tonnes of underground ore with the, with the rest of the 150,000 tonnes to be provided by open pit, uh, open pit feed sources. It's going to take us a number of years to develop that project pipeline, but Pearl Croydon is certainly one of the uh, early development opportunities. High Lake Resources uh, in the 90s drilled this out in a 40 by 40 metre space pattern, which essentially led to an inferred resource estimate of 53,000 ounces of gold at 2.9 grams per tonne. Uh, it's currently a mining license application. We're hoping it will be granted uh, either late <coughs> this year or early next year. First thing we're going to do is go and drill it out 20 by 20, do a resource estimate, pit optimisation and start moving to getting this into our production profile. Some of the uh, historic uh, results you can see there's two at seven, three at 15, five at 16, five at six, all within, uh, the bulk of it all within 30 metres of surface, some a bit deeper, 40, uh, 40, 50 metres. We can see that there's 200,000 plus tonnes of open pit potential there. That's over one year's full-time supply to our gold processing plant. Uh, as far as other regional targets, um, we, we've got medium to long-term growth opportunities at Molden, as I mentioned briefly, the Central Molden Shear Zone, at Denali Specimen Reef, uh, Campbelltown, uh, the Bosun's Reef, and McIntyre, the Matrix Reef. This is essentially our pipeline to sustain the operation. This is what's where we're going to be uh, putting our money in Victoria for our exploration uh, to, to build up these resource bases. Uh, I mentioned underground mining at, uh, at Molden. Uh, the... the, the, the uh, the Eagle Hawk Reef long section you've seen earlier with the Alliance South deposits. The next reef across 
is the beehive reef. The, um, the, red, the red outlines here are, uh, a, a, are expiration targets developed actually by Alliance in 2004. Uh, in 2004, they basically took all the historic mining data, put it all into a 3D model, structural interpretation, generated expiration targets. The first area that Alliance tested was Alliance South. They had immediate expiration success. They haven't tested any of these other targets. Uh, so we've got Beehive here. Uh, obviously there's a target on there. The next reef across is a German reef. Uh, mining ceased in the German reef uh, in, the, in this area. Essentially they hit a cross course, the water beat them. They had to retreat miners, the water chased them out. So that's an obvious development uh, exploration target area through there. And then we have a number of other exploration targets also on the Derby Reef. There's obviously also the potential for remnant ore getting into the historic Union Hill and Alliance workings too. So there's a lot of work for us to do at Malden. Uh, specimen Reef. Uh, specimen Reef at Den is at Denali East. It's 30 k's from Malden. It's over a kilometre long line of reef. This one, uh, we released some results earlier in the month. Uh, it's really shaping up to, uh, to potentially be another near surface open pit mining opportunity. Uh, historic drill results, uh, two at 4.6, four at 7.8, one at eight. Uh, we came in uh, based on this historic drilling and, this, and drilled out a uh, 40 by 20 metre space grid, 40 metre space traverses, designed to intersect the reef on 20 metre spaced holes. Uh, the results we've got here, Three at 22.8, seven at 4.8, 10 at 1.5 there, there's nine at 2.1 sitting up there. Uh, that's 50 metres, the bulk of this is within 50 metres of surface. Um, this reef doesn't look like much on surface, it's a very narrow reef, less than a metre wide, all the bedding, all the reef is dipping, st dipping steeply to the east. We start drilling this, the reef is wrapped around, it's widened up, it's now dipping steeply to the west and uh, it looks like we might even have a moderate south plunging shoot associated with this change in flexure of the reef. So we'll have another RC rig back here, uh, hopefully next month, if not uh, in November. The aim here, uh, it's obviously unconstrained to the north, to the south, and at depth. We're gonna infill drill at 20 by 20 with a view to resource estimate, but obviously we're starting to chase it along strike and at depth to exactly work out what we've got here. The original target when we came into this um, area, we thought we might get 30,000 uh, 30, tonnes of, of open pit mineralisation to about 30 metres depth. This drilling is already indicating it's at least double that, and there's obviously the ability to ext extend that substantially as we go along strike and down dip. The Bosun's Reef at Campbelltown, it's 30k from Malden, 600 uh, 100 metre long line of reef, Again, this is another one of High Lake's old projects. They only drilled it on a, a closest drill spacing 40 metre space traverses. Some of them are up to 130 metre space traverses. This one has some very wide, wide intersections of low grade gold mineralisation, 36 at 1.4, 27 1.1, .1, uh, 11 1.8. Uh, the key here is, I mean, we're only 30 kilometres from Malden. It's ve it costs very little to truck this. It's basically sitting as a hill. All we've got to do is cut it, cut the top of the hill off, cut the dirt through to the mill. So again, we believe at these sort of grades, this, this represents a potentially viable open pit mining opportunity for the company. Uh, our, our longer term, I guess, opportunity is at the Matrix Mine at McIntyre, 50 kilometres from Malden, one of the richest nugget producing areas in the world. The Matrix mine uh, was a very small mine. It, uh, it only produced a few thousand tonnes, but it averaged what, over 140 grams per tonne. Essentially, the structural controls on the mineralisation here are, are, are vertical laminated veins where they intersect with uh, bucky white, uh, moderately west dipping reefs. It's the intersection of these two structures where you get the blowout and the very nuggety high grade gold. Uh, essentially, it looks like these west dipping reefs are, are acting as a trap, uh, and that's what's causing the gold to drop out. Uh, so essentially, you've got the ma matrix reef mine here, obviously an exp exploration target uh, chasing that down plunge. Uh, historic drilling in the area, diamond drilling, has intersected three more of these moderately flat dipping reefs. It's a matter of working out where the vertical laminated veins are intersecting those. So we're basically looking at very high grade pencil-like shoots. Obviously we'd be looking at wanting to chase them up near surface, 
possibly taking up small open pits, but then there obviously is a longer term opportunity to chase these things deeper. I'm not going to say that these, these, these things are going to be a company maker, they're certainly not, but if we can get in there and we can make some good money out of them, we'll certainly do that. So I haven't got into the West Australian project. I uh, felt that, you know, given this was a Central Victorian forum, I would focus on our Victorian assets. Uh, in Western Australia, as I did say, we've spent, uh, we've committed $2 million over two years. We've already, we've already drilled over 500 air core holes for 20,000 metres. We've got another 15,000 metres uh, planned this year as well. We're rapidly advancing that project. It's very much a Greenfields project. Uh, results are looking very encouraging out there and if you're certainly interested in finding out more about that I'd urge you to have a look at our ASX announcements. Um, but I guess in summary, uh, the company, we, we do have a well structured and experienced company. We've got 100 million shares on issue, we've got over 8.5 million dollars in the bank, we've got no options, um, experienced board and management. Uh, Victoria is going to be our cash flow, 30 million dollars worth of sunk capital. Uh, we've got the mill, we've got the resources, open pit and underground, trying to de-risk. We do know we're dealing with nuggety gold. How are we going to approach it? We're going to approach it very caref carefully. We're going to approach it chasing grade, not tons. And um, we're looking at building a business here in central Victoria. We've got a quite an extensive pipe work of projects that we're looking at bringing up to get us to this 30,000 ounces of gold per annum. And uh, yeah, we're, we're very active in the region. We've already completed uh, set 2,000 metres of underground diamond drilling. We're actively uh, refurbishing our mill. We're looking at getting the underground going very shortly. We'll start open pit mining at Wheeler as soon as we get regulatory approval. Uh, we've already completed one drilling program at Denali East. We've got another one starting up shortly. And as we, get, as we um, progress, we're going to start working up these other pits with a view to establish, um, establish the ongoing operation. Thank you. Uh, you're going to be transporting a lot of stuff by road for long distances? Uh, 50 kilometres, 30 kilometres? Yes. Is that, have you investigated the acceptability of, of that through Victorian small towns and stuff? Because, um, you know, I would imagine that's going to be an issue. You obviously have to pick your transport route, uh, certainly, and we, we are aware of that. Uh, there have been no issues highlighted at the moment. Uh, basically, uh, we need to establish our community credentials. Our Alliance Resources did a great job in Molden of establish, establishing a good relationship with the community there. Our approach to open pit mining, and obviously carting ore is included in that, is to start out at, out at Wheeler at Black Reef. It's a very small project. It's only going to be one or two trucks a day. It's not going to be a big operation. It's away from, uh, you know, I guess, the, your general community. So basically what we're, what we're looking at doing at Wheeler is showing that we can do it professionally, uh, taking into consideration the environment, the local community, and start to build up our, our credentials uh, to allow us to start to work on some of the other projects which are a little more closer to the community. Uh, Specimen Reef is, is well away from the community. Uh, uh, whereas uh, Pearl Croydon, it, yeah, it's getting, getting, getting a fair bit closer. So, how we structure it, we're, well, we're well, well aware that we need to um, work with the community to, uh, to allow us to, to produce gold. Uh, we certainly haven't uh, rec uh, recognised any issues at this stage with, with regard to Wheeler, um, but yeah, we, we do know that we're going to have to pick our truck route carefully. Another question just um, about, about leaving the open pit. Is that a view in your reaction from the government? Are you being required to? Backfill the pits? Or we'll have to backfill. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to backfill and revegetate. And uh, basically, we will construct our pits, and we are constructing the Wheeler pit with, with that in mind. Um, obviously, we have to deal with the uh, native title claimant groups to, to get all these things through as well as the other regulatory departments. We're, we're already speaking to the claimant groups about business development opportunities for them which will feed into the rehabilitation process as well. So yeah, we, we, have, we will have to fill those things in. But Anthony, there's been very few backfilling requirements in Victoria. This is almost a first. Is it a company uh, volunteer or requirement? No, for Wheeler, we've been told we had to. Okay. Yeah. Who uh, which department? Oh, I can't tell you, I'm sorry. I'm assuming it's DPI. 
that I'm not, not 100% sure. It was a surprise to me coming from a West Australian background to. Well, let me tell you, in Victoria, there's very few instances of mm. backfilling. Mm. The only backfilling fossil is done is at voluntary in pit tailings. Yeah, well, Molden's, but Molden has, and to, and has to backfill. And waste right. And waste mm. Okay. Molden. Stalls had three open pits without backfilling. Mm. Molden has to backfill. Ultimately, when we abandon the Union Hill decline, that's got to be at a, not completely backfilled, but the not batteries the have to be at a reasonable angle. Not the open pit, but you mean the decline? No, 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 no. The open pit has to be at a reasonable angle. Oh, well, that's, which, that's is why, which is why we're putting okay. all our waste rock in the pit. And that's a safety, that's a bit different to a backfilling. Mm. Yeah. 